Well, hello. Welcome everybody back to JB's Bible and Bourbon Talk. On this podcast, we talk about things that we're passionate about. We're passionate about Jesus Christ, preaching his gospel and sharing yeah. in the truth of scripture and digging deeper into his word. We're also passionate about good whiskey. So we have a couple of pours along the way. Uh, my name is JB. I'm a pastor at a Reformed church in Ohio. And with me on this incredible journey uh, is my good friend, Fancy Rob. Everyone and welcome. Thank you, JB. So glad to be here again as we continue in this series. So as JB said, we're JB's Bible and Bourbon Talk. You can follow us at jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. It's going to have all of our social media links, our Instagram, our Facebook, our, our YouTube, our podcatchers. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this with your friends, guys. We really want to want to reach uh, reach a broader audience. So jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. Well, Rob, uh, recently, a couple days ago, Tuesday, well, yeah. you don't have any, our listeners no don't have that perspective, yeah, but no. whatever. I, I got to uh, have the wonderful opportunity to go on my very first barrel pick with a, yeah. a local Greek restaurant and bar called Opa. Mm-hmm. Opa is very well known for their, their whiskey selection uh, here in the uh, Columbus, Ohio area. Uh, they have an yeah. incredible selection of not just bourbons, but scotch and mm. uh, Irish whiskeys. And the guy who owns Opa really um, has a great palate, does a lot of great barrel picks. And so I got to go to Wilderness Trail yeah. uh, and help pick um, a barrel proof rye uh, with him and a couple other people. And the experience was amazing. Um, like I said, my first barrel pick, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I had an idea. Right. And so we got to, you know, taste six different uh, barrel proof ryes. Nice. Uh, one of which was um, a one-off profile that they were trying out. And ironically, mm. that's the one we picked, ended up picking. They didn't tell us that, you know, which one was which when we were tasting them. Right. It was kind of like a, a blind, so to speak. Like nice. They didn't tell us ages or or proofs or anything as we were tasting them. There were just six whiskeys in front of us. We picked that uh, one-off profile, which was really cool. Um, and then we got to, you know, they took us around their facility a little bit. I know you do one distillery tour. Um, you, you've seen most of them. Yeah. And, but it, it was really cool. Everybody there was just so, so happy. And they, we went into one of the areas and they were uh, lifting up a pallet or a you know, thing with a bunch of bourbon barrels on it with, yeah. with, a, fork, with a fork lift. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to the guys like, now I see why you guys are all so happy. Yeah. Because that really raises your spirits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, was that, um, if you watch this back, you can see my face where I start to realize. <laughs> realize <be> <laughs> that there was a, tr- you know, for, hey, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I tried to ninja it in because I know you did. You got, well, I got the story going and then you just add well, we each little... got, we each got dad joke books for father's day. So <laughs> it's, um, it's on, it's, it's going to get real is what, yeah. is what we're saying. What we're saying is we're sorry. Y'all there's going to be a lot more. <laughs> so Jimmy, that's a, that's an awesome opportunity. Yeah, um, it was great. I loved it. Yeah. And, and I would highly recommend any, any distillery that you can, can go to and tour, right. It's, it's great for them. It's great business for them. You get mm-hmm. to do some little samples depending on your state, different laws, different regulations, right. blah, blah, blah. But you definitely get to try some things, have some conversations. I recommend taking the tour a couple of times because even, um, you know, local ones here that I've taken the tour more than once with a different tour guide, it's been a completely different experience. Um, yeah. So it's definitely great to, we, we definitely recommend you supporting your, your local distillers. So JB, with that said. With that said. What is in your glass, my friend? Well, it's interesting that you said, you know, small. This mm-hmm. isn't local, but it's a smaller distillery. Um, it's one that I always visit when I go to um, Tennessee. Okay. And that's King's Family yeah. uh, Distillery. And this is a single barrel uh, Tennessee bourbon uh, mm-hmm. that I purchased nice. last time I was uh, in the Gatlinburg area. So that's yeah. what's in my glass. I really enjoy King's Family stuff. It's, it's delicious. So yeah, I'm especially going, the rise. Yeah, the double oak. Oh. Yeah, so good. Yeah, it'll get people talking, that's for sure. So <laughs> so I have um, a little bit of a departure from the norm. So I have Traverse City. Um, I have yeah. their, um, 
their cherry. So that that region of Michigan is very famous for the delicious cherries. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a you know a proofed down. Actually, I see some pulp floating in there. So this is <laughs> this is a bit of a proof down, a little sweeter, mm -hmm. um, but delicious. And I love Traverse City's line. Period. So oh yeah, they're their uh, barrel proof is mm -hmm. really good legit I, I, yeah i like the cherry um i would like to try it with uh some of my cherries uh, yeah. i've never done that it's i would like it a little obviously a little bit higher proof right um, through the magic of podcasting i'm gonna mm -hmm. try it with some of jb's cherries oh yeah so this king's family bourbon is mm. um 57.8 percent mm. abv nice. and so it it was feeling a little hot on the palate i dropped in a couple of drops of water sure and, and a lot of sweetness really came through excellent after i dropped in a couple drops of water rich caramel notes really good so i'm glad i did that and i'm glad i dropped in um some cherries because that brought some additional sweetness um this one is nice. like i said it's it's proof down it's 35 it's pretty low right um, but it's still delicious yeah it's not bad i've had it before um mm. so i mean i'm not gonna say it's amazing no but i'm also not gonna it's a good it. change of pace it is and you know sometimes you need that lower proof yeah uh with a little bit of sweetness um so we we uh started um, talking about a message series that we did at our church called the mask center and um, the last message was called the mask center we learned about why we wear the masks mm -hmm. we wear uh, why we hide behind them you know we hide, we hide because we're afraid we hide because we're ashamed and we hide because ultimately we're sinful people but in that message we also learned that we don't have to wear those masks and we don't have to wear them because God in his mercy eases our fears. Yeah. God in his love, he, he, he covers our shame. Uh, we learn that through the interaction of God with Adam and Eve in the garden after they sinned. And God in his grace will cleanse our sins. Mm -hmm. So what we learned is our lives don't have to be by, defined by the masks that we wear. Our lives are defined by the finished work of Jesus Christ through his life, through his death and through his resurrection. And because of his love and mercy, we don't have to hide behind masks. So today we're continuing this series called Unmasked. It's, mm -hmm. you know, the series about, like I said, why we wear the masks we wear and why we hide behind them mm -hmm. and how we can take them off so that God can change us and so that we can experience true community, true yeah. relationship with bo both with God and with, uh, with other Christians. So today we're gonna learn how to take off the mask we wear. And, and this message was called Daring to Remove the Mask. Yeah. And we're going to be looking through Acts chapter 9 mm. as we go through this message. And so um, it's also important to I'll, I'll point out that in Acts, the, the passage we're reading in Acts chapter 9, there's also a retelling of it in um, Acts chapter 22. And I'm going to refer to that at some point um, as we talk about this. But before we dig into the message, Rob, would you go ahead and pray us in? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together, Father. We thank you for those who are, who are watching on, online or are catching us on a, on a podcast. Your Father God, we just pray that you be with them today, Father. We pray that um, we pray for the heart of repentance. We pray for that, that calling and that desire to, to take off the mask and to turn away from sin and, and to run to you, Father. We pray for that for that courage we pray for that boldness and we pray for uh we pray for that obedience to uh to run to you we give this time over to you and we thank you and praise you in christ's name amen amen yeah, i like that we're praying for that courage and that boldness mm -hmm. that we you know we can take off the mask but also the obedience yeah yeah we we need the courage we we need that's boldness, but we also need to be obedient to Jesus and all of this. Our main mm. passage today is going to be Acts chapter 9, as we look at this idea of daring to take off the mask. I'm going to read verses 1 through 5 in the NIV, where it says, mm. Meanwhile, Saul mm. was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there, 
who belong to the way, and that's, again, that's Christianity, any who belong mm-hmm. to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Mm-hmm. Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. And so, you know, what we're seeing, you know, we see Paul or Saul at the time, you know, mm, yeah. he, he was very zealous for the Lord and, mm. and he was on this very specific mission, you know, very straightforward. He, he wanted to bring an end to the way he wanted to bring an end to Christianity because he saw it as a threat, you know, to the power and to the authority of, of you know, him and the, the Pharisees and Sanhedrin. Yeah. And, you know, the truth is, you know, Saul, while he thought he was working for God, he actually mm-hmm. hid behind that self, this mask of self-righteousness. Yeah. And, and that blinded him to the truth that Jesus is Lord. And so the first point that I want to want to talk about and what we see here in this passage is that removing the mask starts with an encounter with Jesus. So what we see is the person who Saul is before he he encounters Christ, right? He's murderous, he's zealous, Mm -hmm. and and he thinks he's following God, but he's really not. And he he has this big encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus, right? Mm -hmm. The, The light shines and he hears this voice. And, you know, he doesn't know... He, he doesn't know who Jesus, he knows who Jesus is, but he doesn't know Jesus as Lord at this time. Yeah. And so this is not his first time hearing about no. Jesus. I, you know, I want to be clear that there's a difference between hearing Jesus and encountering Christ, right? Yeah. Yep. So he, he's heard about Jesus, which is why he's out killing people. And, but now, then now he has this encounter. And so so we talk, we're talk. we talking about how do we start to take off the, the mask? And so it's this encounter with Jesus because uh, Jesus tells him, you know, Saul asks, who are you, Lord? He says, I am yeah. Jesus. And so what Saul has now come face to face with is that Jesus is truly Lord. Now, Jesus was a common name in that day. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the Greek form of Joshua. So it wasn't an uncommon name, but he, he's hearing this booming voice from heaven. So he knows that this has to be a, a, a voice that has power, a voice that has authority. And so uh, you hear Paul say, who are you, Lord? Mm-hmm. And, and Lord isn't uh, a term that Paul would use kind of loosely, right? Because no. Paul was very, very zealous for the law. He was zealous for God. Mm-hmm. And the term Lord would be uh, saved for God. And possibly, you know, some of the some of his teachers. Eventually, this is the word that we use for Jesus. Yeah. Um, and so now Paul has to realize he has this mask on, and that it's you know he 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 had to be crushed, you know, once he heard, "I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting." Yeah. He he now yeah. go ahead. I was just saying, and, and like you said, JB, he was he asked. He knew this was a supernatural um, event, asked who it was, didn't expect to hear, I'm the person that you've been chasing. Right. I'm the person whose people you have been killing. I'm the person whose people you've been throwing into prison. Um, so he, like you said, he knows Jesus is a very common name, He, but he knows exactly who this is because it's the exact one who was saying that this is who he was and he was persecuting him. Yes. And so, mm. I mean, there's no doubt in his mind now. No. I, you know, I've, I've been doing the wrong thing. So, yeah. you know, I, uh, you know, so our ability to remove the mask uh, begins with this encounter with Jesus, an encounter with pure holiness that makes yeah. us realize first that Jesus is Lord, is mm-hmm. what, does, what does Paul say? Who are you, Lord? And then also realizing that we are truly sinful. You know, I, I remember, you know, when I encountered Jesus, you know, I'd heard about Jesus, 
But my encounter with Jesus is when I realized that he was in fact Lord and that I was living a sinful life and I had to openly confess Mm. him as my Lord, Lord and Savior and realized that next to such a pure and holy God, a pure and holy Lord, that I was sinful. But that's how I began to take off the mask was was through an encounter with Jesus. Yeah. And and I don't know if you're if you're done with that point to me because you really yeah. got into point two incredibly yes. well. So we remove the mask through confession, right? We remove that mask through confession. So you you have an encounter with Christ and you confess that he is Lord, that you need him in your life. So we're going to read from Galatians 2, 19 through 21 from the NIV. Yeah. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Right. I mean, it, it's that confession that Jesus yeah is lord and and recognizing that as our lord Mm -hmm. he died that we might have our sins forgiven and so um i I love this this journey that paul is kind of on because you know Mm -hmm. paul writes those words Mm -hmm. but he didn't write those he he couldn't write those words until he had that encounter with jesus Mm -hmm. on the, the road to damascus and so paul is saying all of that out of personal experience you know the grace that he received you know, and so, um, you know, if we're, a, if we're to remove the masks that we, that we wear, we must be able to humble mm. ourselves before Jesus and confess that he is Lord. You know, that's what Paul is talking about there in Galatians is we have to have that humility, you yeah. know, to, to, to recognize, you know, all of the wrong things that we do, just like Paul did, yeah. you know, it, exactly. And for us, it may not be as, um, it likely won't be may not be as dramatic as Paul's, right. right right um we don't need as, as quick of a whip turnaround <laughs> mm-hmm. necessarily hopefully not right um no. but if you if you kind of think back to to who you were before christ and where you were before christ it's a similar scenario you're you're going down the road in the wrong direction right you hear a voice you you, you ask who it is and and you've heard of this Jesus, you've, you know, been to a church as a kid or heard other people talk or, you know, whatever the case may be, but you've had some, you know, of Christ and you know of Jesus, but you don't know Jesus and, and that, that turning you from the wrong way. Um, and then that, that initial confession again, may not be, it may not be the same level of drama, um, but it's definitely the same level of power and impact on your life. And, and you're still following down that same path. I would say not to try and contradict what you're saying, Rob, mm-hmm. I know what you're saying. Yeah. We're not all running out, murdering other Christians, Correct. but sin is sin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't have, well, there's one, you know, we won't get into unforgivable sin, but all sin is falling short of God's glory, right. you know, mm-hmm. us not achieving that holiness on our own. And so while it may not be as dramatic, the, the effects of sin are still the same. On oh, us. absolutely. You know, the wages of sin is death and eternal mm-hmm. separation from God. And so um, I did mention that I wanted to go to the retelling in Acts chapter 22. Yeah. Um, so this is Paul is um, he's on trial, right? Mm hmm. And he's retelling this. Um, and this is what I'm looking at Acts 22 verses eight through 10. And he's, he's recounting this, this encounter that he had with Jesus and it says, who are you, Lord? I ask. Mm-hmm. I'm Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. He replied, my companions saw the light, but they did not understand the voice of him who was speaking to me. What shall I do? Lord? I ask. get up. The Lord said, and go into Damascus. There you will be told all you have to, all that all that you have been assigned to do, and so what we look at is notice twice in that passage Paul refers to Jesus as Lord. You know, yeah. once before he realizes that it's Jesus, and 
he even then after jesus says it's me he calls him lord Mm. you know and like so like i was saying earlier paul wouldn't just use this this uh this title you know just throw it around yeah um it, it he would use it for someone that, of that he should be revering and so i did find the greek word it's kyrios mm. um, and it means a couple of things it's a title of honor it's a title title of respect and reverence but you know paul had very few masters right mm-hmm. you know you know he was a religious leader so he yeah. his one true master is god and then he would have, you know, one or two people that he followed, you know, as, as a Pharisee. So this word becomes the title that's given to Jesus, the, the Messiah. So Saul recognized yeah. he was dealing with who he was dealing with. And this counter with Jesus caused him to confess. Mm. He's confessing here that Jesus is Lord. And that's, you know, t- that's that point we're talking about now is, we, we remove that mask through confession. And this is one of the steps that Paul has to take in order yeah. to remove that mask that he's, he's hiding behind. He's hiding behind self-righteousness and mm-hmm. zealousness. And so he has to confess first that Jesus is Lord, which he does twice here. Yeah. And also that, you know, he's sinful. You know, Paul recognized the authority of the voice that, you know, was speaking to him. Mm-hmm. And Paul had to realize this was God revealing himself to Paul in such a unique and beautiful new way, like he's never experienced before. And that's that encounter with Jesus that transforms us. Yeah. And so you know, we have to come to, to Jesus with a humble heart and confess that he is Lord. And so with that, Rob, yeah. I'm going to ask you a very important question. Oh, boy. Lord, what do you want me to do? No, I'm just kidding. Um <laughs> What's in your glass? All right, so something is about to be currently something about to currently be. nothing. All right, look, ooh, ooh. So I'm going to go with one of our favorites, Midnight Cask. Yes, from High Bank. Yes, delicious, and I'm excited to have some. What is in your glass, my friend? I went a, a bit lower proof uh, okay. than my first one, mm-hmm. even though I did water it down. I just went with Elijah Craig small batch and of course excellent pour two pour two kitty, kitty cat glass. You know, I almost grabbed um Elijah Craig small batch. So did you? I like I, I told you earlier, I almost grabbed a yeah, we midnight were, cask. We we're right there. Kind of on the same wavelength. Um I had some mm. midnight cask on Monday. Yeah. So I decided to go with the I was looking around on my bar and it's like, I'll just go kind of low proof, easy drinking. Um, yeah. Elijah Craig small batch. I mean, you can never go wrong, right? You can't. I love the nose on this. Oh, the the midnight uh, cask. Yeah. Oh, are you drinking the regular or the barrel? The proof? regular. I haven't opened the barrel proof yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see. This is still the bottle that we shared at Whiskey Weekend. Um, oh, okay. So I've got oh, a wow. full. I've got a full bottle of this, and then a full. You've bottle really of held back on finishing it. Well, I just got it. You just brought it down here, so it's in, you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I'd have that had it sense. since then, it would have been gone. Okay. In in a heartbeat. Because I think we've we're on our second bottle of the regular Midnight Cast. Because yeah. my wife really likes it, mm-hmm. uh, and I know that just um, made her sound like an alcoholic, but oh, um, so good. no, it's delicious. Uh, yeah, it's it's mm. so easy drinking, and yeah, the the mouth like it's this creamy mouthfeel because you yep. have that. The, the viscosity of the port wine that's mm-hmm. mixed in and it's such oh, a good pretentious mouthfeel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Mm. put my pinky up mm-hmm. so but, but i mean you're right of course yeah. but <laughs> i can still make fun of you <laughs> yes you can so um we're gonna continue our journey yeah. through the uh, acts chapter nine and and see what you know is happening with saul so We know that confessing that Jesus is Lord and openly confessing our sins, it helps us to take off the masks we wear. So we see in Acts chapter 9, verses 8 Mm -hmm. through 9, Saul got up off the ground, and when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they Mm -hmm. led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and he did not eat or drink anything. And so the next step that we see in removing the masks that we wear 
uh, is through repentance. We remove yeah. the mask through repentance. And this is what Paul is doing right here. It says for three days, mm. uh, he didn't eat or drink anything. That is, you know, what we call fasting. He's doing this fasting of repentance. So he, he realizes he's, he's struck with the gravity of what he has done up to this point that he yeah. has persecuted Christians, that he's murdered Christians. And so now he, he's fasting and mourning over what he did. And that, that's a great step in helping yeah. him to remove that mask. Yeah, absolutely. So we remove on to point three, we remove the mask through repentance. Yes. Um, so we remove, like, like JB said, and it's a great illustration, right? That taking the scales from the eyes and, and, yeah. and being able to see um, and then, you know, you're completely removing that, you're completely removing that mask and, and looking, looking at Christ um, and, and going towards the repentance. So Matthew 4, 17, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Yeah. And we're now starting to hit that, hit that part of the story where you're, you're, you know, you're, you've, you've turned away. Yes. Right? You've, you've heard the call. You've, you've confessed that you need the call and the, that Jesus is Lord and you're repenting that, that you need him and you're, you're turning away from your former life, whether it be persecuting and murdering people um, to lying, cheating and stealing, whatever, you know, whatever it is that, that we all may do because we all sin and fall short of the glory. Um, you know, we're, we're now actively um turning from that and seeking yes. grace yeah and a lot of times we forget that jesus's first mm. command to us mm. was to repent <laughs> yeah you know it says as he's starting his ministry he, stu he, he he starts by saying repent right for the kingdom of god is at hand jesus mm -hmm. calls us to repentance he calls us to confess our sins um, and that's how we, we, we turn, return to him. Mm -hmm. We, we let go of those things and we make the 180, right? Yeah. We turn away from them and walk towards Jesus because, you know, we can confess our sins mm -hmm. and, and just confession isn't enough. No. Right. Cause you can confess your sins and go back to, to them. Right. Repentance takes confession the step further, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's the turning and walking away. So we have to repent. Yeah. We have to first acknowledge our sin, but right. we also have to turn away from them Yep, and not walk back to them. Yeah, exactly. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to stumble. That doesn't mean you're not going to sin. It just means you're actively acknowledging and turning away from that right. current sin that you're in. Absolutely. Yeah, it's that active acknowledgement yeah. that you, know, you have sin, but also actively making the effort to walk yeah. away from it, you know, yeah. get keeping away from those situations that cause you to sin. You know, if mm -hmm. drunkenness is your sin, you shouldn't go to bars, you right. know? So part of your repentance would be staying away from places like that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, the, the new Testament Greek word for repentance is metanoia and it has two meanings. And I think both of them fit perfectly into repentance. The first mm. meaning is a change of mind. Yeah. You know, it's making actively acknowledging that you are sinful, but changing your mindset, like turning away from the sin, you're changing your mm. mind. Like, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. The second meaning is regret and remorse because mm. that's part of repentance is us mourning our sins and, and feeling that remorse and knowing mm. that we sinned against God. So it's, the mourning and the regret, but also turning away from them and changing our mind. Yeah. So we have to think, change about how we think, what we think about. Like uh, it says in Second Corinthians ten five to take captive every thought we have, mm. and so and that's part of repentance is taking captive every thought and turning away from those sinful things and turning towards Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so we have to change how we think and truly feel regret and more yeah. remorse over our sinning. And so we're going to continue on with Paul in Acts chapter nine, and we're going to look at verses 17 through 19. And this yeah. is what it says. 
Then Ananias went to the house and Mm -hmm. entered it, placing his hands on Saul. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, Mm -hmm. something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Mm. You know, grace is getting something that we don't deserve. Yeah. You know, Saul, he sought to end in Christianity, and he did everything in his power to try and do so. Do so. He imprisoned and murdered Christians. Mm-hmm. He deserved his blindness. He quite yeah. honestly deserved death for murdering other people. But even though he was sinful and deserving death, he has an encounter with God's perfect grace. And that's the fourth way, you know, mm. that we remove this mask. You know, when we confess and yeah. when we repent, we have an encounter with grace. We have this encounter with God's perfect grace. Mm. And so, like I said, Paul deserved death. Yeah. But God says to Paul or Saul at the time, not only are you getting your sight back, but now you know you are truly a new creation filled with the mm. Holy Spirit. You, you, you're filled with my grace. There is grace. There is, there is hope when we have a relationship with Jesus. When we confess and repent, we get this beautiful encounter with God's grace. Mm. You know, it says that in Titus uh, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14, I'm reading uh from the nlt on this one Mm. it says for the grace of god has been revealed bringing salvation to all people Mm. and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinless pleasures we should live in this evil world with wisdom righteousness and devotion to god while we look forward with hope to the wonderful day when the glory of our great lord and savior jesus christ will be revealed Mm -hmm. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed committed to doing his good deeds, to doing Mm -hmm. good deeds. Grace is the love of God showing shown to the unlovable. You know, the peace, you know, that of God given to to the restless of heart, the unmerited favor of God. Mm -hmm. grace is the is most needed and best understood in the context of sin and brokenness and that is why everyone needs grace sin kills but grace makes us alive because look at paul he's now changed he's a new person he can see again he's filled with the holy spirit and then he takes that hope he starts to take that hope out to the ends of the world Mm -hmm. Mm. And so, you know, if we're a, if we are to be able to remove the mask, you know, we must be able to humble ourselves before Jesus and confess our sins. And we must also turn away from those, those sins, yeah. right? That's when we encounter God's perfect and loving grace. And by grace, we can dare to remove the masks that we wear. Absolutely. Well summed up, JB. And I think with that, it's time for a break, y'all. So we will be right back. And we are back. We are back. Thank you for we teaching are. me how to Charleston. That was you're welcome. Um, it was a Charleston shoe. So yeah. I just taught them how to eat candy. They're delicious. So I didn't. I know. didn't need much direction, but whatever. <laughs> you didn't. But I mean, freezing it and smashing it on the counter is an art. And that it is an art. delicious. Oh. I'm very sidetracked now. So anyway, welcome back, y'all. Thanks for sticking with us. So we are going to segue into our Eachard pour. Now, this is one that we have talked Wait. about. Oh, no okay. Hold on. Yeah, I don't hold. I don't have a segue. You said we, a segue? Have to, we don't have You're to segue. So we have to segue. Into we do it. have to segue. You're not a mall cop, I see. That's I'm that's not. unfortunate. Anyways. So I think we have our first um, <laughs> plastic bottle. Well featured on, plastic bottle yeah that's true on the featured pour it has um made an appearance on the episode before with a very mm-hmm. fancy uh fresh crack yeah oh, oh. Uh. all right and we have ancient ancient age 10 star 
formerly tenure, hopefully someday to return. It is from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. It clocks in at 90 proof fast math. JB, what is the ABV on that? 45. Excellent. It does not have an age state. It used to. A whole lot of things with that. Hopefully it gets back to it. So the mash bill, again, super secretive Buffalo Trace. It is mash bill two, um, which is the same mash bill as Blanton's with a Z um, for a 750 milliliter bottle, which is not what we have because we buy handles. Um, it is 750 milliliter is $17.95 in North Carolina, 2022. The handle that uh, both JB and myself have were purchased in North Carolina for $29.95. JB, I know, was very happy when I called him from the store and said, there are ancient, ancient, age 10 star handles yep. in stock. So I'm going to pour, as, as, uh, as you see from the twisty, twisty, um, there is no cork pop. Yeah, I poured already. It's very light color. It is. It is a light color. It's a 3D show three-dimensional mm -hmm. it is a light color i've been building up to this uh, in preparation for this nose with my previous pores so what are you getting on the nose jb um with uh trying not to sound pretentious mm -hmm. you sound pretentious already when you say trying to like, sound pretentious when you start a sentence that way you automatically sound pretentious yeah um like baked green apples like cinnamon yeah sugar brown sugar yep. green apple a little slight floral note which is funny because you think of that with buffalo traces we did bill more than more than this one which is the slightly higher rye uh, mash bill too i kind of get that on um a little bit like the i get orange and some cinnamon on, on like buffalo trace yeah i definitely get um, orange on buffalo trace but this kind of reminds me of a green apple. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's it's rumored that this is reject Blanton's. Yeah, and, and same, a, same mash bill. Same mash bill. I am picking yeah. up what you're saying with the cinnamon. Um, yeah. And doggone you, I'm getting the apples now. Before you <laughs> said that, I was, suggestion. Before you said that, and it may have been because of what was on my palate earlier, I was getting some cherry notes. Um, like stone very, fruit. I can see yeah. stone fruit. Very, uh, very light butterscotch. Not much. I, yeah, I can see stone fruit. Cherry is a stone fruit, obviously. Yeah, I'm not right. getting the full sweetness. Oh, cherry is a stone fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so pretentious. I know. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm just going to take mm, a sip. You're just going to take a sip. That's good. Then I'll ask you what's me. on the palate. No, I'm not saying anything because mm. I'm pretentious. You are pretentious. Hmm. Wow. Palette's kind of thin. It is very it thin is. mouthfeel. Yeah, it's not. It, it doesn't. Yeah, the mouthfeel isn't viscous at all, um, like some of the other stuff we've definitely had. But not getting a big finish. Mm -mm. The, you know, they it, didn't. They didn't close out with Freebird. They didn't. They did not close out with Freebird. <laughs> so something weird that I'm getting on the palate that I haven't gotten before. Okay. So I'm a little concerned. It may be what I've had before, but I'm getting that cinnamon continues to come through. Yeah. And I almost get a little, it's almost a little bit of yeast, but it tastes almost like mm -hmm. a light cinnamon toast crunch. Okay. Let me um, just a little go bit. Back. I'm getting young corn too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's rumored to be, 36 to 48 months um, yeah. since they've went away from the, the true age statement. Um, yeah. But yeah, so there's the definitely young, the young corn flavor. So, so with the, um, you know, with the cinnamon, the yeah, yeah. And the, the young corn sweetness, I can mm -hmm. see why you're saying cinnamon toast crunch. I can it's see. It's good because I love cinnamon it. toast crunch. Well, who um, doesn't? I, I think that's one of the, in the Bible somewhere, like one of the, you know, the demons don't like cinnamon toast crunch. They can't right, see one of them. Right. Why kids love cinnamon toast. Crunch. They need the scales removed from their eyes. Apparently they do. Um, 
So and Saul yet, before his conversion did not like cinnamon toast crunch. Exactly. And then after that was, I mean, it's a cereal of the spirit. It's not a fruit of the spirit, but it's definitely <laughs> cereal of the spirit. <laughs> so what what is what is your uh, cereal of the spirit, Rob? I know. It's a, it used, yeah, it's definitely um, fruity pebble. No, I'm just, it's, <laughs> I would say uh, cinnamon toast crunch, apparently. I like cookie uh, crisp too. I think it's underrated. I like cookie I, crisp. I, I think it's good. Um, my cereal. Mm. <laughs> How did we start? <laughs> Rob no, started we're just, cereals of we're the We're just spirit. sidetracked. It's crazy. Boy, are we heretical. Um, <laughs> so I think my, I love, um, and, there's some controversy to it but not oh I mean, boy there's a, no Maybe it's bringing the heat lucky charms yeah lucky like charms he, delicious magically delicious I, I, I love but it's delicious because of the marshmallows right yeah. yes if it were just the uh, cat litter stuff that's mixed mm. in it, it would so like no but the, the marshmallows really bring it home i mean does it look like cat it looks like cat food to me i don't know about cat, cat food, food i think but, that's okay. what i meant to say <laughs> to say <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 good that's more um grape nuts it looks like cat litter so yes um have what, you seen the where are all, we i know have you seen the all marshmallow bag yes for lucky charms like you can buy like gigantic ones like yeah yeah there there was a restaurant that i don't remember what it was that did um lucky charms with bailey's Ooh. yeah it, i didn't have it yeah it sounds delicious. You, sh- you, you, um, messed, I'm not you messed up. You done, done messed up, A.A. A. Ron. That's right. So yeah. go ahead. <laughs> As I say, there's a, I think Troyer Farms near near me is, mm-hmm. um, it's a little Amish style market mm-hmm. and they sell bulk foods. And I think one yeah. of the things you can buy is the, uh, the marshmallows. One of the things that you should absolutely 100% buy. But I always, like, I never buy it. I always buy their, um, pit smoked uh, Ooh, yeah. uh summer sausage you had me a pit smoked pit smoked summer sausage and they usually mm. carry the buffalo cheese curds yeah those are good those are yeah. delicious so what are you getting on the finish oh man as, um, as i attempt <laughs> to reel us slightly back in before i derail us <laughs> you derailed us you started the cereals of the spirit so <laughs> it wasn't I'm me like this it. time I'm like, I, I feel it. like that's a shirt idea. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Let me, let me go in again. Yeah. The finish, like I said, very light. Yeah. It's light. It's quick. Um, this, I get the sweetness of the corn mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On, on the finish. Yeah. A little bit of spiciness and then it just, yeah, it has some pepper. Um, yeah. And then it gets mm-hmm. a little as it as it kind of folds around your tongue, you get a yep. little bit of the dryness, but it's not dry. You oh, just get you a little bit of dryness. Oh, you get now a little you know bit how of it feels. I know it feels awful. Um, <laughs> you get a little bit of dryness, not to the point of calling it dry, but yeah, I know what you're saying. I can I can definitely picking that up. Mm-hmm. Not picking the best up, finish. No, no, I have a. It, it's it's not. Look, I mean, let's let's be real. It's a seventeen dollar bottle. Yeah. Um, this is another one that's just good to have in your decanter for people who come over who maybe not drink bourbon all the time, right? Um, yeah, it, and so a, also I see it's a good um, flavor. People blind people side by side with Blanton's, yeah, with this. And why would they blind somebody? That seems that, that just yeah. seems <laughs> they, so. Do they just well, do they you take for these and, and just put them over their eyes and just kind yeah. of one's Blanton's, one's yeah ancient ancient age and then you then you get ananias to come and pray to uh, block party that i'm gonna have the the scales from their eyes (laughs) it will get scaly especially with the cinnamon crunch just toe just uh the toast just caking your eyes yeah so jb it's off the hook just like fishing man that's right i'm i'm a little curious what your thoughts are on um why buffalo trace is so sneaky about their mash bills we've we've covered this why why are you you're just trying to trigger me i'm i'm trolling conspiracy here is what i'm going for but uh it didn't work no we already discussed this buffalo trace Mm. is either the illuminati Mm -hmm. the freemasons or the order of the water buffalo right which Which i lean heavily towards the water buffalo we all say water buffalo it just it's on brand it is and uh i mean 
the hats. We've we've discussed that. We've too. discussed the them hats. being fire. So, um, I agree. Mm. There, there, but I do believe there's some Illuminati overtones or undertones in the uh, in the hierarchy of the the, wa- the water buffalo thing going. I mean, on sure, there. you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, you got to start somewhere. They're hiding something for sure. Of course, I mean, what secret got, society isn't hiding something? Why you got are you different secret? warehouses? Mm-hmm. Some are off limits. Yep. You know, they got one for Blanton's. Yep. A separate bottling facility for Blanton's than mm-hmm. everything else, too. I'm so. really glad to see that this took off. Go ahead. Nope, done. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> I, I kind of want to hear, though. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that because I was thinking about because there's mm. like there's so much secrecy there. There is. And so you know, people always chase Blanton's. I think it's it's priced higher than it should be. Yeah. And the caps spell out a message. So I believe right. that Blanton's is how they get secret messages to upper mm-hmm. level rich members of the water yeah. buffalo. Right. Because they have to buy them on secondary market. Yep. And so there's a code that, that you have to there's a code you have to crack with uh the spelling of Blanton's and then mm-hmm. information on the label, like you know, the dates right. it was bottled. Yeah. And so what happens is is that correlates with the uh, ancient serpent uh, mm-hmm. Quetzalcoatl and his return to the serpent mounds. I mean, naturally, it's as plain as the nose on your face. Thank you so, for saying it. Yeah. So Buffalo um, Trace, there you have it. I like secret this. messages we in need, Blanton's. We need a Buffalo Trace Dakota ring. <laughs> be sure. Be sure to what? What is Little Orphan Annie trying to tell me? <laughs> be sure to drink your ancient ancient, ancient age. age excellent ancient, i like ancient that ancient age a crappy commercial <laughs> so there we have it buffalo trace is writing secret messages on bottles mm-hmm. of blanton's to the elite uh somebody water had to say it. somebody had to say it members we've we've talked about cereals of the spirit mm-hmm. we we've talked about um blanton's again not blanton's uh buffalo trace being a part of the uh order of the water buffalo slash illuminati Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and the uh secret messages found on bottles of blanton's yeah somebody had to say so and and if anybody out there ever finds the elusive z i'm still looking for it Mm -hmm. um but we've also talked a lot about you know being able to remove the masks that we wear so that we can have the true and authentic encounter with jesus and with his grace and so um you know like i said it's that idea of confessing Mm -hmm. our sins but taking confession a step further and repenting of them so that we can experience that grace so we can experience his love so that we can have eternal life through jesus christ by saying yes you are lord and i want you as my savior as well i want you as lord as the leader of my life, I want you as savior, saving me from my sins so that I can have eternal life in heaven. And that's part of what we're doing. That's what we're about is getting that message of hope out to people in a unique way, you know, sharing the love of Jesus over some Mm. glasses of whiskey. And so if you don't know Jesus as your savior, Mm. it's as easy as just turning from the things that you're doing and looking to him uh, to lead you in your life. And if you want to know more about what that is or how to become a follower of Jesus, how to walk a life in grace, I encourage you to reach out to me, reach Mm. out to Rob, or reach out to somebody you know personally who is a Christian who is willing to talk to you about that. Rob, how can they contact us? Absolutely, JB. So you can reach out to us at jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. It's going to have our email addresses, our Instagram, our Facebook um, podcatchers, YouTube channel, how you can reach out to us. So we definitely encourage you to do that. jbbibleandbourbon.com slash social. And just like JB said, right? Um, I mean, Saul was murdering Christians. He was persecuting Christians. You're probably not quite doing that much. So you're not beyond grace. Jesus used people like Paul and honestly far worse than Paul to, to deliver his message to his people. And, mm-hmm. and he, uh, 
he allowed them, he, he put in them to repent to, you know, to come to him. So you're not beyond grace. Um, it, it is, is the basic message here. So JB Bible and bourbon.com slash social. If you just want to talk to somebody, if you want to contact yeah, us. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so you know how to reach out to us. So until the next time, may the love of God, the father, mm-hmm. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy spirit be with you until we come back again here on this podcast. So look out for the order of the water Buffalo. Right. And if you crack that code, you let me know. You let us know. If you find the Z, you let us know because JB is paying top dollar. Buy it now. Now. (laughs) B-I-N. All right. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time.